All right, let's continue our videos on circuit theory. In two separate videos, I have discussed the output of solid state relays, both AC and DC. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the input circuits, which is a low voltage DC input, usually some LED infrared emitters. On the output circuits usually consist of some form of photo detector circuit. So let's look at our input circuit for solid state relays. Here is a picture of a typical solid state relay, regardless of whether the output is AC or DC controls, your input is going to be 3 to 32 volts DC. This, of course, is um, screwed, has screw terminals and has a metal plate on the back of the relay that bolts to a heat sink. If you're going to carry 220 volts at 25 amps, it's going to get hot. Here's a PC board mount solid state relay. Again, this one happens to be DC, but you notice your input voltage is 3 to 10 volts DC. Another example, I'll blow it up a bit, um, 3 to 32 volts DC input. I get, once again, on this 40 amp solid state relay, 3 to 32 volts DC. How is this done? That we will be looking at. All right, let's look again at the basic circuit diagram of the MOC3000X series of optocouplers. Let's concentrate on the input, which consists of an LED photo emitter rated at 60 milliamps maximum or 100 milliwatts dissipation at around 1.2 volts. These things, depending on current, run from 1.2 to 1.4 volts usually. Let's look at the TLP3063 again. It also has an LED emitter rated at 50 milliamps max at around 1.2 to 1.4 volts. All right, so we got LEDs input. You certainly cannot connect 32 volts directly to an LED. Let's look at how we get around that kind of problem. All right, let's take a look at this very basic input circuit, which consists of a CMOS inverter gate. CMOS integrated circuits, if you remember, run from generally 3 to 15 volts if it's the CD series. Nonetheless, we have a dropping resistor R. The voltage drop across the LED is still going to be 1.2 to 1.4 volts, so we have to drop the remaining voltage across are. Now the obvious solution is if you're building this yourself and it's going to have one input voltage, you could always just use a dropping resistor. And the higher the voltage, the higher the value of the dropping resistor. So at 5 volts, it's 220 ohms. 10 volts, it's 600 ohms. 15 volts is 910. This gives you an LED current of approximately 15 milliamps, plus or minus of 1 or 2 milliamps. So this is your simplest way to do this, but that's not what you do with a commercial solid state relay. What we want to get to is you can put in any voltage in a range from 3 to 32 volts without having to change resistors. To get around this problem of constantly swapping out input resistors, we employ a circuit called a shunt current regulator, as illustrated here on the left side of the circuit. We have a fixed 150 ohm input resistor, and we have Q2, which is a general purpose NPN transistor, like a 2N2222, where the collector to emitter circuit will shunt excess current to ground. Ground assuming being the negative side of the input. The idea is this. We want to uh, maintain approximately 1.85 volts 
at this point here on the collector of Q2. As the current moves through the circuit, you will have approximately, in this case, for illustration purposes, I have 12 milliamps moving through the uh, emitter LED. Now, approximately 11.5 milliamps are going to go through this resistor RB, which is 51 ohms, to ground. The remaining, oh, I guess 500 milliamps is going to be shunted through the base emitter circuit of Q2, partially turning it on. So in the process, if you, with, you'll have at 150 ohms and 5 volts input, you're going to have 21 milliamps. 12 milliamps will be shunted through the LED circuit, and 10 milliamps will be shunted through Q2. That's how that circuit works. Here is the same circuit we had before, but now our input voltage is 24 volts. To maintain about 1.85 volts on the collector of Q2, we're going to have to move 148 milliamps of current through the 150 ohm resistor. That's going to drop approximately 22.15 volts. Of this current, we're going to get an increase in current through the LED circuit to 14 milliamps and 11.5 milliamps approximately is going to flow through RB, the 51 ohm resistor, but the remaining one, but the remaining milliamps are going to be shoved through the base emitter circuit of Q2. Q2 now will have a collector current of approximately 134 milliamps. So the vast majority of current is shunted through Q2 and most of the voltage is going to be dropped on the 150 ohm resistor, which you should be 2 or 3 watts because it will, I guess, get warm at this point. So that's how we're able to go from 3 to 32 volts on the input of a solid state relay by using a largely shunt current regulator circuit that you see here. All right, that's the explanation. We'll see if there's anything left to see. Okay, this is the exact circuit that came out of the spec sheet, and I just, re and I just redrew it. So that's it for this section. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and view the other two videos in this series. Thanks for listening.